This one from Aaron Hughes, huge fan of the podcast and the amazing content from the team, exclamation point. I have a question based on Alex's coverage of the DLSSG to FSR3 mod. It is amazing and has given my RTX 3080 a massive performance boost. I know this is using AMD technology, but do you think Nvidia is purposefully limiting access to DLSS frame generation on older cards to increase sales of the 40 of the 4000 series? If so, could you see an Nvidia adding native support for frame gen on older cards in the future. I don't hmm. I don't see it, Alex. I don't know about you. I mean, you know, there is a solution. Either. There is a solution for um uh for frame gen on older cards now. And ironically, it's coming from AMD. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I it think, seems to be wor working pretty well. Yeah, I think so. I saw this was a comment, so many comments underneath that video and also on Twitter after this video was published, like this video just shows that um, NVIDIA is artificially limiting DLSS 3 to um, RTX 4000. And I haven't done the, vid the, the, the hardcore video yet, but I just kind of want to do wait for more FSR 3 games to come out there and a couple more of the bugs to be ironed out so that we can record it well enough always. Um, but I think the thing people are going to find is that there are quality differences between DLSS3 frame generation and FSR3 frame generation, just like we saw with um, FSR2 and DLSS super resolution. Uh, and I think part of that is going to be down to the fact that one is going to be using machine learning and the other one isn't. But I also think part of it's down to the fact that one has to worry about a different frame time cost than the other. And I think the difference in frame time cost uh, that DLFS, DLSS 3 frame generation incurs is partially due to the fact that it's using high resolution internal buffers for certain things. And uh, I think that is the core reason why NVIDIA doesn't want to port it to the old generation of hardware because the... Um, the motion interpolation image. I always forget the dang name of this thing when I want to talk about it. But that part of it, or the AMD the motion. One? No, yeah. What do they call that? Fluid motion frames. The, the technical name. That's the the branding name. Okay. It's just, like, it's, it's uh, just interpolation. Yeah. It's spatial no, interpolation. It's a flow map. It's some sort of flow oh, map. This flow okay. map. I forget the name of it. Uh, I, I always forget the name of this when I want to talk about these things. Uh, these these flow maps. If the if the I'm pretty sure the old encoding units and whatever the video processing units in the RTX 3000 series cannot handle the size of these things uh, uh, the, of if they're full resolution. And I think actually if you were to look at FSR3, you're going to see it's not using those things at full resolution. Uh, these are tests that are going to be coming in the near future. Shots whenever. taken. There's enough, there's enough FSR3 games you're, out there to actually You're not promising a video, are you, Alex? I don't want to promise a video. when we do it. Yeah, don't but do I do actually want to do this video because right now everyone's talking about FSR3 and DLSS3 as if they're the same. And why are people doing this without any sort of actual investigation? Um, I think we, it's good to show if there are differences at all and what they may be. Um, but I think the thing is, I don't think NVIDIA could have ported DLSS3 down to the older generation cards and had the same quality. And I think that is what they said to us in an interview. And I don't think there's any reason for them to lie about that. They would have to change its quality. And then they get into this awkward situation like XESS has, where XESS, I think it's great. I think actually the XMX version is like right up there with DLSS uh, in a lot of ways. But a lot of people don't know that because they have this DP4A version that's come out that runs on everything and everyone thinks it has certain performance and quality trade-offs. Uh, that it that it actually doesn't have in its like pure form, and if as soon as you have a two tier solution that has the exact same name, people start conflating them in a way that is not necessarily good for branding, or, or good to advertise your new cards. Uh, what if everyone's thought XESS looks like the way it does with DP4A? They kind of do already. Intel is struggling with this, I think, uh, internally. Yeah. Uh, the fact that people will think XESS is a certain thing that it, it's actually better than everything every, everyone there, sees. There is, I think, some level of regret that they didn't call the DP4A path like XESS Lite or something. Yeah, right. Which would have been, you know, just solved the problem with a stroke, would have put clear delineation between 
the two different uh, quality levels. It really would have. And they probably, maybe they'll rebrand it in the future. I have no idea. But that that's another, like, they'd have to change it the way it's presented in menus. It's like, uh, um, yeah. Oh, my, uh. Like, uh. <laughs> that's, that's how I feel about all this. But, yeah, I think with the LSS3, they wanted to avoid having two different quality levels for two different cards. They could, I really do think they could do DLSS3 on the old cards, but it'd be lower quality. Yeah. Uh, and that's one thing they couldn't deal with. And, and obviously they do want to increase sales of the 4000 series. I mean, yeah. yes, let's, it's, it's, let's be clear. We're totally you, fine. <laughs> that's why uh, they want to produce new features, right? Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> so like having two different quality levels for the same thing that has a similar brand, I don't know, that's hard. It doesn't happen too often. And we always yell at it actually when it happens like, the GTX 10, 30, 3050 or RTX 3050. Like you shouldn't have a six gigabyte variant. You shouldn't have an eight gigabyte variant. They should be, you know, they should have different names. So they would have to call it something different. And I don't think they want to do that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, I'm just trying to think where I stand on this. Uh, <laughs> obviously they want to sell new cards, right? And it was a really nice feature to have. And uh, I think it has been borne out by the fact that people actually do use it and enjoy using it. And especially in the era of the high refresh rate monitor, it's actually found particular utility. Um, FSR3, there have been some issues with it, um, but I think it will get there. But it is yeah. fundamentally a software-based solution. And um, yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll do the, the, the qualitative analysis. It's been difficult to do because of this concept of locking um, yeah. uh, FSR3 to FSR2 uh, spatial upscaling. Uh, which isn't great, but you know, there's ways and means to bypass that. Have they solved the big issue I still have with FSR three? Just as the fact that it doesn't seem to work properly with VRR, like in terms Um, of what you visually see. Right. I've never gotten that to work in anything. It just, it looks like judder when it's not perfectly matched to your refresh rate. I think uh, if you take a look at Alex's video on the LSSG to FSR three, that covers off that you know there there do seem to be scenarios where it pops. the same scenarios produce different results. It's so weird, so and that's it, a matter of some... figuring it out. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I, I I really am disappointed that it is so variable, just because I want to make sure the audience is informed. And if I can't find out a reason why something's happening, it's just like. Uh, it it is a bit frustrating. Me. Yeah, it frustrates mm-hmm. me. <laughs> yeah, um, mm-hmm. but for the most part, you can. It depends on the implementation. Like the older ones, definitely you can never get VRR. Uh, with the newer ones, they can be clean VRR, uh, but then they can suddenly not be, and it's a little bit. I'm I'm a bit bemused why as when they aren't. Yeah. yeah, it seems more sensitive. That's the one thing. It seems more sensitive than DLSS three FG to this issue. Like I can I can see some mini perturbations in a frame time graph with the LSS3 uh, when doing recording in our typical sense. But I think since it's such raw software and it's so new that it's still, they still need to make it like foolproof and make it so that it can't have these issues that it currently sometimes has. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. And there still needs to be a latency mitigation solution, right? For FSR3 because anti-lag plug plus kind of disappeared. Yeah. Which once again, Reflex is kind of why DLSS3 FG works really, really well. Um, and it's not the same as just a normal frame rate cap. It's a variable frame rate cap, uh, which is really cool tech. Uh, so I hope they figure out a way to get that in there. Um, I think they're just, since it is open source, they can't, they can't package it with FSR3 by its lonesome. So no. they're in an awkward space. They're in an awkward stance there. Whereas Nvidia is just like, oh, it's exclusive. We don't. Get- of course, we'll package our own exclusive tech with it. Um, so yeah, I wonder what they're going to do there in the future. The the driver solution, interesting choice, um, but they're not going to be doing that. So we'll see. Mm-hmm. Okay. Know. 